Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers and thank you for subscribing. For sure. Alright, so... We're back here with part two on the... Johnson 115 that's been asleep for five, six, eight, eight, six, five years. I don't know. Seven years? Two years? A lot of years. Been asleep. So, we vacuumed and sucked and pressured and blah, 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 and got all that old nasty, 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 nasty gas out of there. Then we opened some jets, or not jets, some drain plugs, and took off some plastics, and, and squeezy, and pump, and squeezy, and suck, and got it all out of there. Until I had good, clear, clean, fresh premium gas running in that puppy. And then I added some. They don't pay me nothing. They should. They don't pay me nothing. I put the StarTron. Blip, 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 blip. We put some StarTron in there. So, while I had the drain plugs out of the carburetor, I shot some TriFlow with the little plastic sticky thing. I stuck a... I put it in there. I put it in there. I put the TriFlow in there. I think it helps. So I put some of that in there and... Uh, then I kind of went for broke and said, well, you know, I'm going to put it all back, get it started up and see. Hopefully there ain't a bunch of that yucky gas. Now when I uh, did squeeze the bulb and everything and I had the filter, the, the actual sediment filter that goes into, or is that is hooked to the power head, um, when I was squeezing the bulb, I was actually to get good, clean, clear gas coming out the drain holes of the four plastic carburetors. Plastic carburetors. Yeah, that's what I said. It's all good. So, we got good gas and everything, and uh, then, then we just got to see what happens. You understand? So, then we also... Got back a little bit on this Merc. I took some things off and then and then. Haven't got to the carburetors yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So, let's take a look at this old Johnson on this beautiful Emerson boat and let's see what we got. There she is. Right there. Alright. Alright, if you look right here, I've got the fuel filter that goes there unhooked. And uh, I've got 10 gallons of fresh, brand new gas in the tank after I drained it. Once I put the 10 gallons of fresh gas in the tank, I hooked up my pump and pulled a vacuum on the line again until I had real good crystal clear gas coming out. So now if you look right here, I'm going to squeeze the bulb down here. you can see I've got good fresh gas there. I've also taken out the drain screws on the carburetors. Let's put this filter back on. All right. Now we should see some gas come out them carb drains. I've got rags there. There it comes. See the gas coming out of the drain? So I've got good clear gas running out of the drain screws. So, we've got good gas. I put in a brand new Raycor right there, which I need to tighten a little bit because it's leaking from its drain. So I'll tighten that up a little bit. But I've got a brand new Raycor. 
water separating filter. I've got good clean gas all the way back. So let me get the drain screws back in and so forth and she'll be ready to hook the hose to and do a test fire. Be right back. Now, you see that net right there? Yeah. Now, you might wonder, what do I do with that net? I'll show you. Here's what we do with those nets. Oh yeah. That's what we do. Those are fresh caught just a little while ago. Sockeye salmon or otherwise known as red salmon. So I got to get busy filleting so I can get them in the brine and then I get them in my smoker. I might have a steak or two for for dinner but yeah those are some pretty sockeye. Fresh Alaskan salmon. Wild caught. Ain't no farm raised up in here. Unless you call the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean. A farm. Because that's where they came from. Just down the road from my backyard. Yummy. So I got to get busy flaying. I don't think you want to see me flay a fish. But I'll show you them as I prepare them and everything and get them ready for the smoker and put them in my dry box and so forth. Yummy, yummy. Okay, I got my salmon in my dryer box. These are sockeye salmon that I showed you. That's a couple of them I flayed. And if you look, you'll see a little bit of smoke going there. That's not to smoke the fish. That's just to keep the flies from around here. If you don't put a little smoke like that wisping in your dryer box, then flies will literally land all over that screen. They can't get to the fish. It's screened on both sides. Um, but I don't like them buzzing around when I'm cleaning fish. And I find if I light me just a little tray smoke right there like that with a couple of I, I got like three little charcoal briquettes and then I just put some wood chips on it and it wafts around the, the drying box and keeps them flies away but now what we're fixing to get busy doing what is it? well yeah that's what is it that's what is it We gotta get to filleting these sockeye salmon so I can get them in the brine and get them dry on a stain. the backbone flip it over ain't that a pretty fillet and now I clip the backbone flip it all over again Right down that backbone again. A little bit of it.
and get rid of that. I just thought I'd show me doing a couple of these. And that's what you end up with. And then I'll soak these in a brine. You can see. And that makes a beautiful once I hang them in the rack like those ones there. And let them dry for a bit. And it's on to the next one. Five more of these to do. So... Aren't them some pretty sockeye? So that's how I fillet them and get them ready for the smoker. And like I said, these here, these here aren't smoking. That little bit of smoke is just a tray of smoke to keep the flies away from my operationus. You want a Spanish? I speak it as Spanish. And they're not Spanish mackerel. They're sockeye salmon. So those in my dry box have been brined, rinsed, and now they're, you air dry them. You don't have to worry about any spoilage or nothing because that's cured. Those have been brined in a salt, sugar, spice mixture. Um, they've been brined for 24 hours and so they are cured and then you want to let them dry and I have a fan here that I can put on them and uh, help that but a pretty sunny day with a little breeze is the best uh, best way to to dry these things so that's what I'm doing. After they dry for about four hours, they'll get a, a tacky outer surface called a pellicle. And that's when they're ready to go into the smoker. And I'll smoke them four to six hours. So, and I'll show you that when I go to take them out. Now, I'll be back. Okay, I got the water hooked up. You can see it flowing down there. I got the fuel hooked up, everything buttoned back up. You're going to see what I'm going to see. Let's go. I'm squeeze the bulbs.
gonna stand. All I got left to do to this guy is that lower unit oil. Then it's time to do up a bill. Um, yeah, the Raycor was leaking still. So the bulb didn't want to bulb up. So I tightened it up and gave it a few squeeze. She tightened right up. Starts and runs good. So let's get on that lower unit. Let me get my stuff. I'll be back. Okay, I got the oil draining out. And if you look on the bottom magnetic drain screw, there is a little bit of little bit of shavings there. A little bit of metal yuck. Not much, but it is present. So I've seen worse. Oops, make a mess here. Get old nasty milky looking oil out of there. It's not not real bad actually. But the owner said he wanted change, so the owner get it. Change. Yeah. Unstanced. So we get it out of there. I like this little skeg protector thing he's got on there. Um, apparently he broke off the aluminum skeg and then he put this stainless steel one on. Which is good. Most people wouldn't. The propeller's yeah, got a little bit of dings. He got a little ding, a little dingy dingy lingy lingies. I'll point that out to the owner. It's a little wobbly. It's not good for your lower inner seal there and your O ring. Little bit of vibration. Zip, 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 zip. Uh, now, bring you over here because we're almost drained up. Are you even in there? Are you even in there? Okay. Now, I got me a big old glob of Vaselinus. Right there. Petroleum jellionis. And that way when I pull my little fill spout out on my oil, or not all my oil, but some of my oil, instead of leaking it out and being in a hurry, I just put that big old blob of Vaselinus in the hole. And then I can take my time. holding quite a bit. There it comes. Now, after you get a little bit coming out, that pretty clean oil, give it one or two pumps real slow to get them air bubulets out of there. That's what I like to do. Just real slow. See that bubble? Watch them. See that bubble? See that bubble? 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 Oh, there we go. Now we're running solid. That's what you want. Run it until you get solid. And put in your plugs. Then put in the plug. Never a tight. Now when I unscrew my little deal, a little bit of oil is going to want to come out. Well you want as much of that oil to stay in there. So like I showed you in other videos, get you a big old blob of petroleum jelly oasis. And I keep mine, I have a freezer here in my little shop. I keep it in the freezer so it's nice and thick. And it's cold. It's so cold. And when I pull this out, I'll shove this in that hole. Like so. And of course, something falls out. But once I do that, ugh, it don't leak terribly bad. It gives me time to put in my plug. Now, 
There we go. Now I'm gonna tilt it back up a little bit so I can see what I do. But yeah. Makes it a little easier on these old bones. So I mean, they're crooked, I think. There we go. Get in there right. Get in there right. Get in there right. You want to get it in there right. Give it a good snuggie. There we go. No. There. Yeah, let's give her a wipe down. That little bit of oil that you're seeing drip there is coming from this, this skeg guard here. Where it ran down in there, it's hollow in there. So... We let that drip a little bit. There she is, all topped off. Give everything a wipe. Make it all perfect. Then, put my other adapter back in there and get rid of this. People, people say, hey, Cody Bass, what are you going to do with all that old motor oil? What do you do with all that old nasty gas come out of that boat? EPA going to get you. We going to call the EPA. You are polluting. You are polluting. See them jerry jugs? See them all? Look at them all. There's three. There's four, there's five, full of old gas. Yeah. And I got some old oil too now. What am I going to do with all that? That old nasty oil and that old nasty gas. Well, pretty simple. That oil, I put into jerry jugs as well. And I take that to my friend Tom who is one of the best machinists and fabricators I've ever met. And he'll take that old oil and he takes it all from me. I take it to him in five gallon jugs. Whenever I get five gallons, um, I'll run it down to him. He lives about two blocks from me. And he has a waste oil burner and he has some kind of centrifuge thing. I don't know what it is. He got it. And he dumps that old nasty oil in there and does something to it spins it, vibrates it. I don't know what he does with it. But he'll take it from me and he heats his house with it. Now that old gas, I'll save probably two of those little jerry cans you saw. I'll save two of those for parts cleaner. And I might even save that one five gallon jug just to see if it'll run my old mower. And if it will, I'll burn that up through the mower. A mower is not the space shuttle you do on a Stannis. If it runs overly crappy, I won't run no more of it. But we have two stations, one at the Harbor Master and one out at the uh, landfill, that for a very reasonable price will take all that old gas. Um, they charge a little fee, but it's not much. It's very reasonable. Um, and of course, I will pass that on how much ever I take to one of the uh, refuse centers I will take it and I will bring the receipt back and I will add it to the bill to pass on to the owner of this vessel. So that's what I do with all the old oil and gas. Um, none of it goes on the ground, none of it well other than what I spill. 
but I mean none of it uh, is intentionally put on in the environment um, we're lucky that we have like I said two stations and they're always there's they're the landfill one is open to five every day including Saturday and the Harbor Master one is open 24 7 seven days a week so we're lucky in that regard and it's not very expensive at all I could take every bit of this gas that I got out of this old boat down there and I bet it wouldn't be eight bucks and you know that that's it'll be it'll be around that but it'll be ten bucks or less so a uh, really good deal and really good way to take care of the old gas and so forth so that's about a wrap on this guy here um, put the bonnet on it and give it one more testoritas and I think we are ready to do up to bill on it Uh, ouch! Pinch my finger. Nope. Nope. Just one of these weird ones. I gotta hook the back before I can hook the front or some crapola. Yes, it is. There she be. Oh. It's hot by my standards. I'm guessing 71 degrees. And I know where a lot of you folks are. From. That's chilly. But it's sunny, it's pretty. And the Emerson boat is good to go and ready to get out there fishing. Like I said, one more last look at this beautiful craft. Just a well-built, well-built skiff. I mean, nice trailer, nice king saltwater. Beautiful. 
motor seems to be running good fresh lower unit oil fresh spark plugs fresh gas vacuumed and blown fuel lines clean fuel filters um, and whatever else I did to it I can't even remember but uh, time to do up a bill add up all them parts call the owner and say come get your beautiful boat yeah, I really like it. Nice boat. So, now you might say, well, what about that Mercury? Oh, you mean this Mercury? Yeah, I know it got a little dark in here. Let me see if I put some light on the situation. That don't help much, but as you can see, I got all the electric choke and all this and yeah and yeah and yeah and got it out of my way and there's my two carbonators and if you could smell what I smell right now you'd be like Ooh, them carbonators need some cleaning got the little plastic mercury Venturi turbine thing in there yeah. but yeah they stink I mean you can smell the, the, the old gas in that so I can't wait to get them apart but first I'm gonna take a break and refreshing up my big jug iced tea because I just swallowed and swilled that one down so I'm gonna take a break and then we're gonna come back and take them carbonators off after we take them old carbonators off, we're going to look inside, clean them up, and put them back together. I'll be right back. You see that smoker? She's a billowing. I got some salmon in there, some sockeye. And I'm smoking her at about 100 degrees. You say, how you know her temperature? I'll show you. See right there? She's just coming up just about 90, 80, 90. So she'll get up to about 100 in my top box there. In the old Masters built. Now in the bottom box, in the bottom master built, that's where my heat source is. It's just charcoal briquettes and wood chips and chunks of wood. I've got alder, apple, and cherry going. And then in the top box, that's where the salmon is. And it'll only get up to about, depending on which control disc I use, and I'll show you them later, it'll only get up to about 120 or so, maybe on a hot day, 140. But it's just perfect for smoking salmon, cured salmon. These were two old master built electric smokers that a friend of mine saw by a dumpster. And he thought, and I told him I was looking for something like these, insulated. And he brought me both of them, so I flipped one upside down so that the um, chimney pipes would line up. And then I connected the two together with a three inch piece of stove pipe, bottom to top. And then I have these discs that can regulate how much smoke I want in the top box or heat and if I'm doing something like a brisket or something I'll put the meat right down there in the bottom box which will get about to 250 275 and slow roast me a brisket or whatnot but right now I'm doing salmon and I want the temperature to stay down until they uptake some good smoke and then if I want to heat them on up I just shift them from the top box I take the whole rack and slide it into the heat box but this thing's worked out really good so when that salmon gets done I'll pull it out of there and give you guys a look-see I'll be back all right so 
We got the Johnson 115 all squared away for the owner and they have come picked it up. And so we are back on the Mercury Fitty three cylinder. I did get the carburetors off. Um, so there they are. Let me get a squig of my iced tea. That good. Alright, so there are the twins. So we're gonna open them up and see what we find. Them old stinky, stinky, nasty, nasty carburetors. And there's the intakes and the read share system on that thing so we got that apart I don't want to rush this motor um, it's really dirty so even before I get on the carburetors I'm gonna do some cleaning on it it's sit out there in a dusty parking lot hanging from the back of a skiff neglected and abused look at all that dust on there you see that look at that see that see that yeah look at all that just dusty, dirty, so I need to get my air compressor lit off, blow that off. And that's noisy, so I ain't going to film that. But just give it a good cleaning with a spritz bottle, maybe a little old gas here and there. and Get her all cleaned up. She dirty everywhere, here, there, everywhere is dirty. So, and then we got the carbonators sitting right there, relators. All right, so I didn't think it was going to be, but it turns out this is going to be a three-part video because I want, like I said, I don't want to rush this Merc. Um, She's been sitting a long time in some adverse conditions. You understand us. Mm. This video is getting long, a little bit long here. So in the next video, we'll get on these carburetors, hopefully get this thing cleaned up good enough to put it in a tank, see if she's going to come to life. And who knows, maybe we'll even go for a boat ride in this next video coming up with the old DT40 and check out that lower, make sure it's all good to go so I can order a water pump and change the lower unit. Oh, you understand? That's what we're going to do. So that's going to be a wrap on this one. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part three on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.